Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming. So this forum is about Danfoss TurboCore uh, compressors, and we're gonna talk about a new uh, variant of the compressor that we have. So first off, um, my name is Frank Ford. I'm from the United States. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida, uh, which is the headquarters for Danfoss TurboCore compressors. So I've been with Danfoss now for a, l a little over 11 years, and I've been in the industry for more than 20 years so far. My uh, role with Danfoss is I'm head of uh, product management. So I'm going to start off, give you an introduction to Danfoss TurboCore, um, go over some of the, the key benefits with oil-free compressor technology, uh, talk about our active cooling, uh, which is a new variant of the compressor, uh, talk about the benefits for how this affects the compressor operating map, go into the particular ap applications where we see that this could be a very good fit, and then uh, wrap up with a summary at the end. So first off, um, if you haven't heard of Dan Foster before, thank you for coming, because <laughs> uh, we wouldn't expect you to, but uh, we are the world leader and the pioneer in oil-free compressor technology. So. Uh, Danfoss created the oil-free compressor, the, the TurboCore compressor. Uh, next year, we will be celebrating our 30-year anniversary as a business. So we've been producing uh, oil-free compressors now uh, for quite a long time. We have over 150,000 compressors deployed around the world. Um, we have the largest portfolio of oil-free compressors for low GWP refrigerants. There are over... Uh, 14 different compressor models uh, to select from. And there are also over 29 different compressor variants uh, to select from. So not only do we have the, the model, the standard temp, which would be typically used for a comfort cooling application, but we have other variants of the compressor, uh, which are uh, modified to be able to target different applications such as data center or such as uh, refrigeration applications. And so now the active cooling version of the compressor is a new variant uh, that we'll talk about. So uh, why choose Danfoss TurboCore and, and what we're known for? So the first uh, key benefit with, with Danfoss and oil-free compressor technology is that you can get a more simple and reliable uh, system. So by eliminating the oil from the system, you can eliminate everything associated with oil management. So you're fewer parts, so increase in reliability just by part elimination. Another big benefit is on the efficiency. So the first key benefit from efficiency is because you no longer have oil in the system circulating and uh, coating your uh, heat exchangers and reducing their effectiveness. And so then there's another big benefit with uh, eliminating the oil from the system by way of having magnetic bearing uh, technology. So Magnetic bearing technology allows you to be able to eliminate the friction from the system because you have no parts in contact. There's no mechanical wear. And whenever there's no wear, there's not going to be any loss of performance over time. So that, that only comes by way of having magnetic bearing technology. Uh, another key benefit, of course, is going to be lower maintenance. So by having uh, no oil in the system, you can eliminate all of the tasks associated with that. Um, the key thing that's a differentiator, though, for turbo core and magnetic bearing is the fact that it is friction free. So no parts in contact. And that's not the same for anything that that wants to uh, call itself oil free. So it's only magnetic bearing, which is friction free and lubricant free, because a lot of oil free systems will use refrigerant as the lubricant itself, which has potential failure modes. And so by eliminating uh, the, uh, the oil and using mag bearing, you can, you can avoid any uh, uh, friction, any uh, uh, lubricant. Do I. So going on to the active cooling uh, compressor and, and what is it? So basically this new version of the compressor extends the operating map to be able to allow you to take the oil-free compressor to applications which were not really accessible before. So these are applications like air-cooled chillers and extreme ambience, and I'll explain what that means more in a little bit. Uh, also, high-temperature data center, uh, specifically targeting the needs now for liquid cooling. It also extends the benefits, and this is the key uh, target uh, for us, into heating applications. So 
the way it works, um, if you look at our compressor today, uh, the uh, operating map is defined based on uh, a couple of different uh, characteristics. Um, two key characteristics are the motor and the uh, electronics cooling. And so I'm showing uh, here that, you know, uh, whenever you integrate the turbocore compressor into a system, you have a, a feed of subcooled liquid refrigerant that comes to the to the compressor and it's for the purpose of, of doing all of this cooling and it comes into this port up here so then we have a motor uh, solenoid which allows flow to come in and cool the motor cavity and we have a inverter uh, solenoid which allows flow to come in under this cold plate and it cools the electronics in the in the top side com compartment so those two things are generally what is going to lead you to uh, defining what is the range you can achieve on this compressor performance map? So the most significant one, the most significant factor is actually the electronics cooling. So the, uh, the challenge for our engineering team was to figure out how can we extend the operating map to be able to go after applications for heating. And so with a higher heating application, we need to be able to increase the saturated discharge temperature. The same is true also for air-cooled chillers at high ambient. So uh, by doing a better control of the electronics cooling, we can increase that saturated discharge temperature up, also known as the condensing temperature. And now we can get higher hot water temperatures and higher ambient uh, uh, ranges of operation. So then the other uh, factor in driving the higher saturated suction temperatures up or evaporating temperature is uh, if we're trying to do something to be able to go to higher uh, process water temperatures, higher chilled water temperatures, especially what's uh, being asked for today uh, by data centers. So TurboCore today, our, our range is typically somewhere between 20 to 30 uh, C on the, uh, the uh, saturated suction temperature. Um, so in order to try to drive up this up above 30 C, um, uh, is where we need to get to a target for liquid cooling. And then another opportunity is if you have complex uh, heat exchange, uh, uh, heat pump type of systems, which are uh, multi-stage or compound. So then you need to be able to ha tolerate higher suction temperatures because one of those systems is gonna be on the top side. And so you're gonna have a higher suction temperature inlet for that compressor. <laughs> So how does it work with the active cooling variant? So what we've come up with is a different design. So this is that same refrigerant port that I mentioned earlier. So this is where the subcooled liquid comes into and down below is where those two solenoids are for the motor and the inverter cooling. So what we've done in order to try to gain better control over the electronics temperatures is to add another port with a separate solenoid valve going into this heat exchanger. And so now, we have two paths of heat rejection for the electronics. The first path is that cold plate, which is still there. But now the second path is going to be this other heat exchanger in the top. And so this is going to help us to be able to control uh, the temperature better. So if you, this is a little dark and I'm sorry, uh, but this is our soft start. So if you're familiar with the TurboCore compressor, all of the electronics for power uh, are at the top of the compressor. One of the boards, so this soft start board, has a fan uh, which is used to, on today's compressors, just mix the air in the top so that we don't have any hot spots. So that new heat exchanger that I was just showing um, is connected uh, with this fan so that now we're circulating air through the heat exchanger, not just mixing the, the air anymore, but actually circulating the air to reject that heat uh, into the small heat exchanger. And this is going to help keep the electronics temperatures in the range where they like to be, which is around 60 C. So this is not like cold. This is not a little refrigerator. This is uh, just trying to keep the electronic temperatures down. So there's not going to be any risk of condensation. So with this now and the new active cooling variant of the compressor, we can achieve significantly higher saturated discharge temperatures. So if you're familiar with our compressors today, the range of saturated discharge temperature varies by compressor model. The, from somewhere, if you're talking about an air-cooled chiller, typically you're gonna be at 60 or air-cooled air capable compressor like a TT350 or a, a TG380 are gonna be around a 64 C saturated discharge temperature. 
And so now we're able to take this, this compressor from 64 up to 81 and a half, uh, which is quite, quite a lot of range extension. And this is going to help optimize the compressor so that you can target more heat pumps or process heating applications. So it's things like domestic hot water or dehumidification for industrial process or indoor swimming pools are now opportunities that you can go after. And then, of course, space heating for underfloor, fan coil, baseboard heating. Um, also, large capacity district heating systems, um, process heating for bread, meat, uh, uh, dairy, or uh, even uh, breweries. It's now a, a good, uh, good fit. So then the other big opportunity that we see with uh, this active cooling variant is whenever you're trying to target air-cooled chillers and extreme ambience. So what does extreme mean? So today our compressors are capable of handling up to 57C in terms of ambient. So this is if you're trying to drive higher, one of the big opportunities is going to be uh, uh, whenever you can utilize the active cooling variant. You can also uh, not just have to use the uh, additional saturated discharge temperature range for uh, the uh, higher ambient, but you could also choose to use it just to be able to remove cost from the system by reducing the condenser surface area, or you could potentially remove the number of compressors because now at the higher saturated discharge temperature range, the compressor has more capability to operate at those high ambients and will not derate. It also allows for chillers just to be spaced closer together, which is something that is, is happening quite often now in uh, data center uh, environments. So speaking about data center, uh, the other key opportunity, so I just talked about the things that you can see with the benefit from the higher saturated discharge temperature. What you can see with the benefit from the higher saturated suction temperature is that you're going to be able to operate at higher water temperatures without derating. So again, today the compressors will be between 20 to 30 uh, C on the saturated suction temperature. And if you start to drive too high, today's compressors are going to start to derate. They're going to see that the temperature in the top is too high, and it's going to slow down the speed in order to bring the temperatures back down into range. And so by managing that temperature in the top side, we're capable of operating at these higher temperatures without uh, reducing or derating the compressor. So compressors up to 30 C can be able to operate at full power without derating, and then you can operate even higher uh, up to 40 C. This is what's helping to drive towards uh, active cooling, uh, towards the liquid, uh, liquid cooling for data centers, and helping to be able to enable uh, uh, energy uh, savings and then uh, improvements in overall PUE. This is a short video just kind of recapping uh, some of what I was mentioning and also uh, giving you a little bit better visual on how the, uh, the compressor is gonna operate. So this is showing the TT, uh, TGH uh, compressor, which is a two-stage compressor with both uh, uh, impellers. That's the uh, suction port again. And then the flow of refrigerant through the solenoid, uh, which is controlling in order to maintain this top side temperature uh, below 60 C. So now by controlling the top side temperature, we prevent the compressor from uh, derating in conditions where it would otherwise be too hot. With the 81 and a half C uh, saturated discharge temperature limit, you can reasonably expect to achieve hot water temperatures as high as 80 degrees C. For the air-cooled chillers, uh, again, today's compressors, you can are capable of operating up to 57C, but they can have some D-rate depending on the conditions. And now you would be able to achieve that uh, high ambient operation without the D-rate. So, yep. Yeah. So with that, uh, the active cooling variant we see is key to our ability to be able to support the electrification of heating we see that it's a very good opportunity to improve the uh, data center efficiency and the transition to liquid cooling and to be over, able to overall meet the needs uh, for higher temperatures, whether that's higher processed water temperatures, higher saturated discharge temperatures, uh, to be able to support heating, hot water, or higher ambient temperatures for air-cooled chillers.
So if you have not seen it already, uh, I do encourage you to come to our booths over in Hall 7, uh, number booth 251. And uh, we do have an active cooling unit on display in our booth. You can see that uh, as well as some of the other uh, products that we have from Danfoss. Uh, as far as TurboCore specifically, we have a TGH-285 uh, medium temperature compressor on display, which is one of those that uh, I mentioned earlier, a variant which is targeting different refrigeration applications. We also have on display our TurboCore cloud monitoring system, which allows you to be able to monitor all of the data off of the compressor and store it in the cloud. So uh, highly encourage you to, uh, to stop by the booth and uh, see what all we have to offer from uh, Danfoss. Um, if there are uh, any questions, I can take that uh, now, or um, you uh, also, like I said, uh, feel free to come over to our booth and talk to any one of our experts over there. Yeah. Let's, let's refrigerants, so, right? Is some of these rated for? Uh, we have four different refrigerants available for TurboCore. Um, so uh, 134A, which doesn't really matter uh, anymore, but uh, 513A, 1234ZE, and 515B. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it.